Yeah, isn't that true, you know? And uh, it's so sad. It's so sad. I mean, you know, Adam and Eve made, made bad choices, and because they made bad choices, we, we suffer the consequences of those poor choices. But see, that's even true today. You know, if, if your parents make a poor choice, doesn't it impact you? Oh yeah, sure it does, sure it does, and uh, and and we as parents, um, we recognize that, you know, our choices impact our children, and so we have to be very careful about the choices we make, and, and, and we want to make choices so that the impact that we have on you is good, you know that that's the kind of choices we want to make, we want to make choices so that when you look at us you say, boy, mom and dad they're they're making good choices, you know? But sometimes that doesn't happen. And, and, and when that doesn't happen, that's when the rest of us need to rally around each other and care for each other and love each other and help each other. Because people don't always make good choices. And uh, that hurts our hearts. But at, but at the same time, you know, God gives us the gift of his church. And God gives us the gift of each other. And so, when some people mess up, then other people need to step in to help each other, and to love each other, and to care for each other. Uh, those are things we do as God's people. Because when, when Adam and Eve messed up, and when we, we mess up, God steps in for us. You know, he steps in for us to help us. And, and we're ever so grateful for that. But, um, yeah. So Adam and Eve rebelled against God, you know. And, and how did Satan get him to do that? What did he do? First thing he comes up, he asks, here's the first, by the way, every time you're tempted to do something wrong, it basically follows this outline. Are you ready for this outline? Okay. First thing Satan does is he comes up to you and says, did your parents really say, you're not supposed to watch those movies on HBO, Showtime, or Cinemax while we're gone? No. They may have said it, but that's not what they meant. What they really meant was that you shouldn't watch some of those movies, and we all know what those are. That, that's that. So, so that's the second thing. So first he says, did they really say it? And then the second thing he says is, no, that's not what they said. And then the third thing is, he replaces it with his, his sayings, where he says, it's okay. Number one, they'll never know. Number two, you're old enough. Number three, your friends will make fun of you if you don't. So go ahead and do it. Isn't that what he did to Adam and Eve? Did God really say you aren't supposed to eat from the fruit of this tree? No, that's not what he meant. Besides, he knows if you do, what was his promise? You'll be like God. See, those are the three steps. Whenever you're tempted to do something wrong, somebody's going to say, hey, is it really wrong to take something from the store without paying for it? No, it's not wrong. I mean, besides, the, the store, they, they plan on this. I mean, they bump up the prices on everything in the store to cover the cost of people who take things without paying for it. So, and besides, if your parents really understood that you needed this, they would get it for you. So, go ahead. It's okay to take it. Do you know how often I get a phone call from parents because their kid took something that wasn't theirs and they got caught in the store? I get calls about once a year. I get a call the mother's crying. My brother, she rang her. My child's down at the youth detention center. Why not call Stanley something? You know, and your dad says, I'm going to kill that kid. 
and then I got to go down and save you. Don't make me go down to save you, all right? Okay, it happens. It happens. And, it, and it's, it's foolishness. But why do people, by the way, when we go shopping, if my wife and I go shopping, do you think they're going to follow me around in the store to see if I steal anything? Probably not. But if six or seven of you young people walk into a store together as a little crowd, do you think they're going to watch you to see if you're going to take something? Yeah. Oh, you betcha. <laughs> yeah, you do that, man. You're going to assign somebody to follow you around. They have all these little cameras. They'll be watching you go through the store. I'll tell you, don't do it. It's not worth it. But the important thing here is you are tempted. You are tempted. Did God really say? Did your parents really say? Did your teacher really say? Don't share your answers. Do your work independently. No, that's not what they really meant. You know, what they, what they, what they, because you're just trying to help your friend out. I mean, the teacher didn't know that your friend had like um, an event to go to. They had to, they had to go to a sporting event. They had to go to a concert. Uh, they had to do. They had more homework from other teachers too. We were just overwhelmed. So, just this one time, I'm going to help them out because I'm a good friend. Did they really say don't share your work? Yeah, they did. But that's what happens. That's what happens. And so, we need to be aware of that. And parents, you need to be aware of that process. You know, did God really say? That's not what he meant. Here's what he meant. That's how it happens. All the time. Let's look at letter B. Letter B. I forgot where I left off. I was having so much fun talking. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Sarah, I think we'll, we'll go to you. Letter B. God punished human rebellion by cursing the earth. Even though the earth sustains life, God's judgment is also evident. Storms, pests, earthquakes, diseases, and so forth. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Bible tells us that the whole earth is groaning. Because of sin. <clears throat> sin messes up everything, you know, and, and how sad that is. You know, it's kind of like uh, at Thanksgiving, everybody's at, at, at somebody's house, and we're all having a good time, and then all of a sudden somebody, somebody ruins it, you know. Somebody gets angry. Somebody says something unkind, uncaring. Somebody, they're, they're fusing. They have a short fuse or whatever, and uh, they say something that hurts somebody else. And the whole attitude changes, doesn't it? Everything's different now. We were all having a good time, and now it's all messed up. It's not fun. And then people start leaving, going home. Some people say, we're not going back next year. You know, we're not putting up with this. That's what happened to the world. That's what happened to the world. The whole world got... Messed up. The whole world is now in anguish because of that. And you and I live in that world. And we didn't do it, but it's ours to deal with. And so we have to deal with that now. We have to deal with a world that's sad. Because those of us who were the crown of creation are sinful. And that messes things up. And uh, how sad that is. But it happens. But Kenna, how about the next one? Letter C. Top of page 151. Therefore, we need to repent of our sins, trust God's promise of forgiveness in Christ, care for those who suffer, and pray for God's restoration of all things when Christ comes again. Yeah, we got a little bit of that. That's what Advent's all about. Advent not only celebrates the first time Jesus came, but it also celebrates the fact that he's coming again. You know, that's why, like, for example, we read the Palm Sunday story on, on the first Sunday because Hosanna, you know, God saves. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And so we're looking for that salvation that God will bring. So you and I, we repent. We strive to live the life that God would have us live. Uh, we, we celebrate God's promise of forgiveness. And we come to the aid of those who are in need. That's what we do as God's people. Because God gave us a little something to do to care for them. 
Well, let's look at page uh, 46 on the right-hand side where that's those bold letters. Why do some people suffer more than others? Um, well, that's a fair question, I guess. Uh, Autumn, could you start us off? Just read that little section there in the, that on the right-hand side. We want everything to always be fair, right? We also know that life isn't fair. We, question 137 lays down two reasons why some people suffer more than others. Read these two reasons and mark them down. Okay, so let's look at question 137 and see what happens here. So let's look at letter A and, and see uh, what, uh, what we can determine from that. Um, let's see here. Uh, Emily, could you read for me? In some cases, we bring the suffering upon ourselves as a consequence of our sins. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, if you know you got a test and you don't study, and you sit down at your desk and the teacher's handing out the paper, and you go, Dear God, I know I didn't study last night, but please help me to remember everything so I do well on my test. Amen. I don't know that's going to work. All right? Because you might hear this. Uh, last night you were supposed to be studying instead of playing online. So, good luck and good riddance. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Sometimes we just mess up and we bring our own problems upon ourselves. And, and that can happen. That can happen. And so we have to, again, recognize that lots of times we're our own worst enemies. We make bad choices and then we have to bear the consequences of that, unfortunately. But, Ellie, how about the other one, letter B? Yeah, you know, those, those are hard things, and, uh, and, and all of us are, are confronted by them. You know, we say, you know, how come, how come this happened to that person? And, and the truth is, we don't know, but there, there are some things that we just don't know and won't know. Uh, and we need to trust God when those, those kinds of things happen. But, but they do happen. And, uh, and we don't understand necessarily why certain things happen. You know, how come some people get ill? You know, how come some people are involved in an accident? How come some people, well, whatever, whatever the, those, those challenging times are, um, we don't always understand why things happen. Um, but nowhere in the Bible does it say that God will always explain everything to us so that we understand it, you know? I bet you, I bet you your parents have told you this. Don't you worry about it. This is our responsibility and we'll take care of it. You know? Because when I was young, I would ask my parents about certain things that were going on and they would say, Paul, don't you worry about it. This is for mom and dad to take care of and we'll take care of it. You just have to trust that we'll deal with it. And that was kind of the end of the story, you know? What are you going to do? You know, and I'm sure your parents have said the same thing to you. You know, as you get older and as you mature, you start asking more questions. You start observing more things. You start asking about certain things. And some of those things your parents can talk to you about, but some of those things are reserved for your parents alone. And it's their responsibility. And they may say to you, you do not need to concern yourself with this. This is something that is our responsibility. We'll deal with it. We'll address it. And you don't need to be concerned about it. Trust us. We'll deal with it. There are some times when God says to us, you have to trust me. I'll take care of it. We may not understand why. It may not even seem right to us. But we have to trust that God will, in the right time, uh, deal with things in the right way. And we don't always know why, but we, we just have to trust in God for those things. Well, let's look at the bottom of page 52. Uh, that uh, little tan box there. That little tan box. And uh, let's, let's take a look at that little tan box. And I think, is it Shelby? I think it's your turn. 
if you would be so kind. That's on page 46 in your workbook. Uh, whoops, wait a minute. You don't have a tan box on page 46 in your workbook, but I have a tan box in my book. <laughs> so, so, proper prior planning there. Okay, here we go. So, let's take a look at this. Um, it just talks about what we just talked about in terms of, uh, of that. And then it always, it has this little remember thing here, which always makes me smile, which it says, you know, if God was really fair, guess what? We'd all be in big trouble. We're, we're really grateful that God was kind of unfair and dumped it all on Jesus, you know? And uh, Jesus uh, took it all upon himself for our benefit. Well, let's look at the uh, top of page 47. And Shelby, I'm going to try to do this right again. So let's take a look at uh, the, the, what it says there at the top of page 47. You can read that little paragraph for me. Okay. The first article of the Creed tells us about all of God and our Heavenly Father, the first person of the Trinity. He's the maker of all things and still takes care of us. But why, but why did God create the world? And how does He still know? He shows that He takes care of the world and us for us. The question 141, there's each letter that corresponds to question 141. Why the world of friends that describe the God and death Okay, so let's take a look at question 141, and let's fill in our little, uh, our little box here. And, uh, oops, 141. All right. And there's, I know we're jumping over a few things here, but that happens sometimes. So, Micah, we're back to you, my friend. Could you start us off with question 141? What is the significance of confessing that God did all of this out of fatherly, divine goodness, and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in it? And read letter A for us, sir. God did not have to create this world. He created it freely out of love. Okay, so if we look at uh, letter A there with that line, it asks us to uh, write a word or a phrase that describe what God does for us. So the first word in there, what verb would we put in there? Ooh, a little English. The grammar stuff here. Ooh. What did God do? God did not have to what? Create. Okay, so God created. By the way, isn't that neat to know that God created us? I sure am glad to know that I'm not a, a cosmic accident. You know? That although sometimes you get up in the morning and you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, whoa, that's a cosmic accident looking back at me. I need to get a shower. <laughs> Brush my hair, you know. But uh, no, you know, God created. So we are not an accident. We are the crown of God's creation. Uh, and that makes <laughs> us special. Uh, and for that, we are ever so grateful to God. Let's look at letter B. Letter B, if you would, please. Uh, Nora. Yeah, okay, so we've already used the word create. So what's the next word in there we want to do? He mercifully what? Sustains us. Yeah, that's a good word. So like we said earlier, remember, we aren't like that, uh, those, the, that little thing on somebody's desk going click, 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 click. But God actually sustains us. He's the one who watches over and makes sure that our world is sustained, that it keeps going. It's not like we're just whipping through the vastness of the universe, hoping we don't smash into something along the way. But rather, God watches over and sustains all things. Let her see. Let her see, please. Taylor. Okay, so what does God what does God do here? What does He do? This one's not as clear, but but what does God give to all of us? It's the very first word. Life. God gives life. It's not something that is is owed, but rather the life you have is a gift. It's a gift. Life is a gift. And uh, what we need to remember is that the life that you do have 
is gift from God. And that kind of informs you as to how you treat your life and how you treat the lives of others when you see life as a gift, as a gift. You know? I remember uh, reading not too long ago when we were, when uh, the whole thing of terrorists was, was being discussed and there was a discussion with a terrorist and they said the difference between you and us is you embrace life and we embrace death, you know? And that's why they have no qualms in killing people, right? They, they don't, you know, they, they don't care who they kill, just that they hurt people and they create, they create the destruction and how sad that is, but that's, that's their mantra. But we recognize that life is a gift from God and that God gives life and for that we are ever so grateful. And then, uh, let's see here, who's next? Blake! If you could read letter D for me, sir. Creation and redemption are bound close together. It is by God's goodness and mercy that we were created, and it is by God's goodness and mercy that we are made new again in Christ. Right. So God creates and God, what's the third word in letter D? He what? What does he do? He redeems. To redeem is to buy back. And that's what he did in Jesus. He bought us back from sin and eternal death and creates for us new life in his name. Well, let's uh, turn over to page 48 here. And we're looking at questions 142 and, and, and following. And, and these go uh, rather quickly, so let's just take a look at them. And uh, let's see, I just finished with Blake. So Libby, if you would please, 142. Why do, you, why do we say that it is our duty to thank and praise and serve and obey? It's the only right and proper for creation to respond to the gifts of their creator in the word. Thanks and praise, indeed serve and obey. Right. And uh, again, stop and think about family. You know, with parents, you know, and for all that our parents do for us, for the love and care they show for us, you know, we, we say thank you. You know, when our parents ask us to do something, we do those things because that's how we live together as parent and child. Well, the same is true. How do we live together as God and a person of faith? And the answer is we thank and praise God for all the good things he's done for us. And yes, we serve and obey him. We do the things that God would have us do. And let's look at question uh, 143. And uh, let me see here, who was next? Jenna, I think you're next. Yeah. And, and we certainly do. We, we express our gratitude in him, and, uh, and we do that in our prayers. Uh, we do that in, in our conversations when we always thank God. You know, on Thanksgiving, I bet when you had your table prayer around Thanksgiving, that you prayed and thanked God for all the things that he gives. Not only a table that was uh, laden with food, but also for family friends, and all the, the, the other. We uh, express gratitude for that. And how about uh, letter B, please? Uh, I forget who's next. Lost my spot. Uh, uh, Sarah, if you would. I praise God by proclaiming and praising his words. Okay, and again, uh, we thank and praise. Praise is, again, just a, another way of saying how, how precious God is and how thankful we are for all the things that God has and continues to do for us. And McKenna, could you read uh, letter C? I thank and praise God <clears throat> as I worship with fellow believers and with them in my daily routine. Yeah, and uh, again, worship is, is so very, very important. And, um, you know, we, we want to stress that. You know, worshiping God is not an option. You know, it's not like, like, oh, I got three things to do today, so uh, let's see, one of them has to be going to church. 
let's see which ones that we want to do. Church is a priority because that's how we get together with people who love us and support us. That's how we get together with God's fellow believers. And besides, God kind of has some expectations of us with worship, doesn't he? And he expects us to be there, gathered together with the saints, so that we worship him for all of his goodness and all that he has done for us. So how, how blessed we are. Well, my friends, next week is Lesson 12, and uh, we'll, we'll see a lot of you uh, here uh, tomorrow, but uh, the rest of you, uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, on next week as we talk over Lesson 12. So blessings to all, and uh, we'll see you in church if we haven't already.